Hi there, RC Girl here. I finally finished my Capra. It's been a long time coming, I know. I think all in all, once I got started, I built it over the course of like three nights. And then I've been putting the final touches on it the last week. I think it looks really great. I just painted the body panels. In this video, I'm gonna go over my initial impressions on the kit, talk about some of the build highlights and assembly tips, and also share some of my early upgrades out of the box. Stay tuned. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here you're gonna find RC reviews, tips and tricks, run videos, flight videos, and other things related to RC. So make sure you like and subscribe. Also check out my Instagram and Facebook. I'll put those in the description box here. First off, before you get started, I already mentioned this in my previous video and it's been all over the internet, but if you're doing this build, make sure to download the PDF instructions, which have been updated. There's a couple things in the manual that are wrong. So make sure that you download the PDF. I just had it on my laptop on my desk as I was doing the assembly. I will put links to everything that I got in the description box below. So check that out if you guys are interested in any of these components. Most, if not all the hardware are 1.5 or two millimeter hex. They are really nice hardware. I don't think I stripped out any of the screws. Actually, I did probably strip out one. These require a lot of force to get in. So I think I did, um, I think I did strip one, but that was about it. The kit comes with all the lubricants and oils that you're gonna need. So your thread lock and your grease and your 30 weight shock oil. A note about thread lock, if you're kind of new to kit builds, thread lock any screws going into metal, ones going into plastic don't need it. One thing I highly recommend is getting a set of digital calipers. These are gonna be super, super helpful with the build. I got these online for like 25 bucks on Amazon. These are gonna be helpful for picking out the right screws because sometimes it's like two millimeter difference. It's really hard to tell which one they're asking for. I really recommend these, really handy. I thought this kit was really high quality. All the plastics are really nicely molded. Compared to my SCX-10 II, they just feel like a lot higher quality and they fit really well together. There also aren't a ton of leftover parts, like they don't have parts trees. I usually end up like just stockpiling a ton of those and not really ever using them. So I think that was nice to not have a lot of waste in the build. So let's start with some of the highlights from the build. When you first start out the build, you're gonna build your portal axles. And a build tip, if you open a bag, make sure to sort everything that is the same. So if you have bearings all the same size, count them out, put them together and peek ahead in the instructions so you can see and plan ahead. The axles are pretty simple to assemble, but do watch out for putting the pin in the right place because you want your axles to be the right length. I did one, I had to go back and do it again. Also make sure that you generously grease all the gears. So the links, the links are really nice, solid, heavy metal links. This is where, again, the calipers are gonna come in handy. Um, another area where sorting out all your ball ends and parts is gonna be really helpful because there's slightly different angled ones that are kind of difficult to tell apart. So make sure you check the instructions for the correct parts and the angles that you want. All right, steering servo. I went with the Spectrum 6250. I'll put the specs on the screen. Um, this is a really nice, fast, quiet, quality built servo. It has normal size screws to access the circuit board for disassembling or replacing gears if you ever need to service it. It also has a detachable lead. I made sure to put a little silicone grease in there when I attached the lead to waterproof it. And I don't believe this servo is waterproof. So what I did is I removed the bottom portion and coated it generously with Corrosion X. And um, it has a nice sealed rubber gasket around this chamber. So the Corrosion X should waterproof it and do the job. This servo has a 23 tooth spline count. All around, I'm really happy with this servo. It is on the pricier end though. I think it's around a hundred bucks, um, but hopefully it's really high quality and it'll last a long time. The Capra has a crazy wide range on the servo for turning before your links will hit the diff box. So this is gonna have a really tight turning radius. I'm excited about that. Okay, the transmission is where you really wanna pay attention on the assembly. There's a lot of different screws of similar looking sizes. So make sure you use the calipers here again to measure the exact screws that you need. The gears do fit really cleanly together. You're gonna wanna use um, your grease pretty generously here as well. It has a somewhat complex assembly for shifting between two and four wheel drive for the dig function. After, uh, <laughs> After the assembly, I wish I did use a little bit thicker of a grease because it's a little bit loud. This is the step where you're also gonna install the DIG servo. I got the Spectrum SX107 micro servo. The DIG programming is pretty simple. You just have to set your servo endpoints and set it to a switch.
The motor, I went with the 27 turn Axial 540 size brushed motor. This will do the job. Folks have mentioned that I probably want a higher turn motor. The Dynamite ESC, you can adjust the drag brake between 50 or 100%. I set mine to 50 and you can also change between NIMH and LiPo battery. So not a ton of tunability, honestly, but I think it'll do the job. It's a really budget friendly setup. I was actually eyeing the Tekken BXR. It does have a lot more programmability. I might upgrade to that um, in the near future. So for my shocks, this is where I upgraded out of the box. I'm actually not sure if it's an upgrade um, from the stock ones because I haven't tried them yet, but Ot6 Racing sent me a care package with a couple of their new components, and these are their new Voodoo shocks. They're dual spring shocks. They can be run with or without oil. They come with this kind of sticky red grease in them already. I'm gonna try running them without shock oil first and see how they handle. To actually use all the functionality of dual springs, you have to use the full range of travel in at least one of your springs, but these ones don't compress either of them completely, so it's actually functioning still as one spring, um, but we'll have to try it out. These are 90 millimeter springs as well. The stock ones are 97, so you are gonna lose a little bit of travel, but people have been saying, hey, it sits kinda high, you can lower the CG if you go with 90 millimeter, so we're gonna try them out on the trail and uh, see how they handle. So my wheels, I'm really excited about these. So the Capra kit, as you probably know, doesn't come with tires. For the tires, I went with Alt6 Racing KLR M Vex Gold Compound. The Vex Gold is their softest compound. Supposedly good in mud, really nice, deep, aggressive tread pattern. Has a little bit of siping as well. I'm really excited about these beadlocks. They're kind of innovative. These are their new variable hub or very hub Capone wheels. They're aluminum and there's a couple cool things about them that I really like. You can change the stance by just adjusting where you attach the hub to the rim. It has a couple different offset options. I also added circumference weights. These are optional circumference weights that screw on to the circumference of the rim and add a lot of weight up front. So that's gonna really allow your crawler to dig in and lower your center of gravity. So I'm excited to try these out. And for the hub, you can either get brass weighted ones like I have in my fronts or aluminum ones, which I put the aluminum ones in the rears. Total weight in the front is just over 600 grams. For the rear, it's about 300 grams. So hopefully this will keep the center of gravity low, keep those tires planted when you're crawling. For foams, I went with the Ot6 three-stage foams. These are for trucks less than 10 pounds. My truck is around six pounds, so this will be perfect for that. These are open cell foam. They get stiffer foams as you move into the center. They don't look as high quality of foam like the Proline closed cell foams, um, but they feel pretty solid and we'll see how they handle. If you're using the circumference weights, these are going to be sealed. So my fronts are sealed. Uh, the rears though are gonna be vented so I had to make sure if I didn't want them to be vented that I covered it with a little bit of Gorilla Tape. I run my trucks in water, so I don't want my foams to get ruined. So if you're going to be running in water, make sure that you uh, pay attention to that. Drive shafts. I upgraded these out of the box to Ot6 Racing Voodoo Metal Drive Shafts. These are 90 millimeters. I probably could have gone with a little bit longer, but I measured them before I had assembled it, so I didn't really know, but they come pre-greased and pre-assembled, so that cut down the build time quite a lot, which is kind of nice. Um, they make these in multiple lengths. I think in the rears, I probably could have gone with a little bit longer. There's a little bit more um, of the undershaft exposed than I would like, so consider upsizing for your rear, but honestly, these are gonna be fine. One thing that I learned is that you wanna make sure your drive shafts are in the correct phase. I didn't really know what that meant, but someone commented on my one of my Instagram posts. Um, and so I'll put a schematic on the screen. The drive shaft attaching both to your axle and to your transmission, you want the grub screws facing up so they're in the correct phase. For my receiver and transmitter, I went with the SR515 receiver. This is a five channel receiver. I mounted it on my dash next to the ESC. I think you can also put it in the rear little gas container thingy in the back, but I didn't want to run cables all the way back, but it's not going to be waterproof up there. And then the DX5 Rugged, I have a full video on the DX5 Rugged. It's great. Program all my rigs just in one transmitter. For lighting, the Capra only has 14 millimeter headlights. So I did a little A-Main order and ordered some $10 halos. 
they're blue and you can also use the LED as well. Capper also comes with three and a half inch LED light bar. I think it looks cool. And then I did also get a night saber. It's like what people put on their full-size vehicles, their um, LED whips. It adds a cool touch. That's pretty much it for this video. It was a really fun build. I did a whole video, I'm gonna post that next, on how to airbrush. I did the panels with my first airbrushing kit with the Perlin paints. I think it looks really cool. So that is it for the Axial Capra build. I can't wait to trail test it. I've been staring at it for a long time on my desk and I really wanna take it outside now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna add my Capra photos to the build forum on Facebook. Let me know if you guys have the Capra kit and have done any cool upgrades and mods. We'd love to hear about them with a comment below. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you later.